We're back on halftime with Bob Pisani now with today's ETF Edge. Hey, Bob, a special guest with you, too. Indeed, Scotty. Stock prices are trending down. Bond yields are trending up. Stocks are entering their seasonally strongest period of the year. But many investors seem happy to clip 5% yields on Treasury bonds. Leave the stock market alone. What's the investment outlook for the rest of the year and into 2024? Here's my guest, Rick Reeder, Chief Investment Officer of Global Fixed Income at BlackRock. But you really are the head of the BlackRock Global Allocation Team. That's, That's the important thing. You determine <laughs> strategy for the company. There's one topic, everybody's mind, direction of interest rates. Will rates be higher or lower by the end of this year or in early 2024? So, first of all, there's a big geopolitical dynamic that's been driving or moving around the, the, the flight to quality and moving interest rates. Let's assume, for the time being, God willing, that that is stable. Listen, the Treasury's got to issue an awful lot of debt into the, uh, into the system. So my sense is, if you take the short end of the yield curve, I think the Fed, we're going to hear from Chair Powell this week, I think the Fed is largely done. Could they get another hike in? I think short end interest rates have done most of the work. Could the long end of the curve move a bit higher uh, from here because of all the issuances coming? Potentially. But I, I don't think we're going very far from these yield levels. I think we've seen the big rate move already. You run the global asset allocation team. So active bond ETFs, they're having a moment. You launched this new active. You're running this yeah. thing. So it's your, your <laughs> baby right here. It's the yes, BlackRock Flexible Income ETF. Yeah. You launched it in May. It's got 160 million assets under management. Uh, two things stick out about this. Number one, this is very unusual. We've got a lot of international stuff here, a lot of Brazilian, Mexican bonds here, some high yield stuff. Emphasis on shorter term as well. What's the emphasis on, on international? Is this where you so, can get better yield now and uh, outperform treasuries? So, our, I mean, by the way, our emerging market exposure is pretty small. Mexico and Brazil are sort of the apex or the best quality of EM. It's only about 5% uh, of the portfolio total in EM. We're using a lot of European investment grade credit, European high yield, because of U.S. dollar investors benefit quite a bit from, because there's a cross-currency basis, because you can actually get more yield for being a dollar investor. So you can get, for, for really high-quality, short-end investment grade credit, you can get 65 to 7%. Same thing, high yield, you can get close to 10 for Europe. So we are using some Europe, and it's a pretty unusual point in time that as a U.S. dollar investor, you get that sort of yield for what so our it's the, the strong dollar is really helping when you go out Correct. and buy these and, assets. And by the way, you're talking about good quality credits. You know, European investment grade credit, two-year, three-year paper, you can get almost 6.5%. I've been doing this a long time. Think about negative rates in Europe. You now get 6.5% for high-quality assets in Europe. Two and three years. You're not taking a lot of long-term interest rate risk, so that's pretty darn attractive. Yeah, I want to talk more about that on ETF Edge, but what about... The broader picture, all those equity investors out yeah. there sitting on the sidelines, clipping 5% Treasury bond yields, huge competition for the stock market. I'm, I'm the stocks guy here. I hear every day from investors. They don't want to be in stocks. What would entice them to come back to equities? Or is it a lot of this money just permanently going to stay in the bond market? So, so I mean, so there are a couple things at play. One, the Federal Reserve is probably going to keep rates here for an extended period of time. Secondly, the U.S. Treasury is issuing. We're getting supply of $400 billion a week. Of, thing, of Treasury bills. I mean, the numbers are immense. The ability to get five, five, actually five and a half percent, they're going to print bills this week at five and a half percent, pretty darn attractive. I don't think that it means you can't own equities. If you go into next year and you say, gosh, what can I do in my bond portfolio? You know, you mentioned our ETF. We're yielding 7.4 percent with a lot of high quality assets. That is a competitive uh, asset to equities. That being said, I think equities will do their job next year. Can you still throw off eight to 10, maybe a bit more in equities? I don't think if you take seven stocks out, the multiples on equities aren't that high. If you take the earnings yield of equities, they're still pretty attractive relative to Treasury bills. Yes, that is, uh, there is money that's yeah. going to stay in Treasury bills. I still think equities will do their job. Earn, and, and earnings yields five, five and a half percent, so serious competition. I, I'm going to bring my colleagues. Scott, has got a question there. Scotty. Hey, Rick. Uh, Bob, thank you very much. I just had a question for you based on what you just said, $400 billion a week in issuance. And everybody is focused on it, as you said, at the outset. I'm, I'm wondering, does any part of you worry about the Fed losing control of rates mm. at any point as a result of the issuance that's coming on the market? Yeah, so, I mean, listen, this is a big week because we're going to learn about, I mean, hopefully inflation is moderating. We think that is right. We think you're going to get it next year. You'll get it in the high twos. Labor conditions, you are building some slack. It'll be interesting to see the JOLTS report this week and the payroll report. Listen, if you continue to have strength and then the Treasury's got to put that much issuance. By the way, if you take coupon supply like you had last week, we got almost $600 billion last week. The numbers are staggering. Will the Fed lose control of it? My sense is not. 
But listen, I mean, we got to, and I think everybody who's in the investment community today is hoping that the growth will be moderate. And by the way, that's what we're anticipating next year, and that inflation is moderating alongside of it. But that is the key, because if that's not the case and the Fed's got to keep going and we've got to issue that much, yeah, you can, have rate, you can have rates move higher. Again, not our base case, though. But a lot of people are saying this recent increase in, in rates has done the Fed's work for it, essentially. Is that correct? That is correct. I mean, that's so, you know, you think about what happens. Most companies borrow, not like they used to be. They don't borrow off the front end of the yield curve, generally. They borrow out the curve. Mortgages borrow out the yield curve. What has now happened is long end interest rates have moved up. That's what tightens financial conditions. And the fact that, the fact that you've tightened financial conditions, you not to get too technical with the forwards, and you know, we were pricing in a Fed. If you go back a couple of months ago, that was going to get to two and a half, two and three quarters over the next couple of years. They've moved back 160, 170 base points. That's done an awful lot of work for the Fed. And I think Chair Powell will reference that this week. And it's a big deal that, yeah. uh, that they don't have to keep going if the markets have done it for them. Thank you, Rick. We're just getting started, folks. We've got much more on the new world of bond investing with Rick Reeder coming up on ETF Edge. That's 1.10 p.m. Eastern time. Rick will be talking more about the outlook for rates, the economy, stocks and bonds. And much more on his actively managed bond ETF. He's running this one himself, ETFedge.cnbc.com. Scott, back to you. All right, Bob, good stuff. Appreciate that very much, Bob.